Over a year ago, I started the first ever Muslim Jewish hip hop group in this whole country alongside a Jewish rapper called Daniel Silverstein. And what we were trying to do was bridge the gap because we knew that there was a lot of tension between both communities, especially because of the Israel and Palestine issue. So we addressed a lot of stuff for our music and we kind of showed to the world that there's actually a lot of similarities that we do have. So what I try and do is focus on the similarities that we have rather than allow the differences that we also have to keep us divided. So um, recently I wrote a piece called Janine, which is about a refugee camp in Palestine. And this piece is, is uh, about Janine, but from the perspective of a Palestinian child. So the kind of things that he goes through. And I've done this piece because I was asked for it to do a project. And I will stand up and speak out against injustices because that's what we taught as Muslims. If we see something wrong, we should try and change it with our hands. And if we can't, we should speak out against it. And if we can't do that, then we should try and change it with our hearts for our prayer. And I spoke out against that just the same way that I will gladly write a piece from the perspective of an Israeli citizen. And if he went through something that's wrong or some, something that I saw as an injustice, I would also speak out against that. So it's not because I'm a Muslim or Jewish, but we're taught to speak out against any injustices to mankind. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Your remarkable landscapes are fading away. Now a barren wasteland is always seen today. They covered your soil with the blood of numerous martyrs. Who gave their life to the struggle when times were the hardest. Oh sweet Janine, tell me, will you ever be free? No more occupied oppressed like they want you to be. You deserve much more than Christ from a child. Seen his whole family murdered, bodies all piled. And when the Zionists decided to kick up a fuss. He grabbed a bulldozer and turned my house into rubble and dust. Oh sweet Janine, tell me please what will it take to stop the genocide continuing inside of this place to put an end to all the madness. Last week, last week we were forced to strip naked. My mama refused because she said that her body was sacred. So they burned down my school and I wonder who's responsible for making those rules. Why are they here? From who were they sent? They drove us out from our home. Now we live in a refugee tent. Mummy cries herself to sleep and daddy is scared. Does the world know what's happening? Does anyone care? It doesn't seem fair. My little brother's only five but already in a wheelchair. Cause he got shot while praying in the mosque. Now his happiness is gone and hope almost lost. Look deep in my eyes and tell me what do you see? Do you see a terrorist? Or a child that wants to be free? For how long more we will be degraded by these vultures? How my sisters dishonored while they treat us like filthy cockroaches? I swear I die trying, cause in the depths of my heart lies the soul of a soldier who rather die serving his maker than live by the laws of the Zionist culture. I've been stripped from my rights, now enslaved in my own birthplace. Just take a look at my people. Can't you tell by the pain on their face? Can't you see by the way that they live? When the children are crying and hungry, but there's nothing to give. And if we speak against oppression, they're quick to put, put, put holes in our joints, force our women to give birth in the streets next to their daily checkpoints. So the next morning after Fajr, with the broken metal piece, I dug a hole as deep as I could, then kissed my mother's forehead and hugged her for a little longer because I knew that I should. She asked me if I'd make her proud and I told her I would. Then without looking back, I walked to the outskirts of my refugee camp. There I stood like a lion, my heart never sank. Staring at the next tank, with a rock in my hand, I said, look deep in my eyes and tell me what do you see? Do you see a terrorist or a child that wants to be free?